у мене трясуться руки, тому що я щойно побачила, як летить ракета. І я почула це. In that video, you see a young girl in Ukraine uh, ca capturing what might have been a follow-up strike. Perhaps it's why she started filming, but it was part of the uh, massive wave of missiles that struck in multiple cities throughout Ukraine over the weekend. Uh, in response to that, Vladimir Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, wrote on Telegram, there were missiles hitting across Ukraine and that Russian forces were trying to wipe Ukraine off the face of the earth, saying, unfortunately, there are dead and wounded, and the number of both dead and wounded has been, of course, as it always does, going up as more, you know, more on the ground work is done and more news gets out. Um, but here is uh, Mayor uh, uh, Vitaly Klitschko giving um, an early this morning update on how many had died. Велика терористична атака російських варварів на столицю та обласний центр України. У Києві ми бачимо зранку в Учаньківських районах, зокрема в центрі нашого міста. Також агресор вдарив по кількох об'єктах критичної інфраструктури. За даними, на цей час від ракетних ударів в нашому місті загинули п'ять людей. There is referencing five dead just in that city, but I've seen 11 and I'm sure that it will end up being more because these strikes we can use many terms to describe them, but indiscriminate feels like one of the most important ones. They struck bits of infrastructure, that is true. They also struck parks and government buildings and children's playgrounds and basically all over the place they struck. And I do mean all over the place. So you can see in this next graphic, a list of all of the different cities where just where some of the, the strikes took place over the weekend. It's the, you know, the length and breadth of Ukraine, including some places like Kyiv that had not had strikes of this sort for some months. And to be clear, Vladimir Putin, he said that the Russian military launched precision weapons from the air, sea and ground to target key energy and military command facilities. And I will say I will have to take his word for it. He says that they were precision strikes and so when they're striking apartment buildings and parks and things like that, I have to believe that he's being honest. Those were precisely targeted strikes against civilian populations by Russia, by Vladimir Putin. And so that's where we're at. He's saying it was in retaliation for an attack against a bridge that was connecting Russia and Crimea. Uh, sure, maybe that's the proximal cause for it. I think that it makes a lot more sense to say that he's been getting his ass kicked all over Ukraine for a couple of months now. He's humiliated and he feels the need to strike out as all weak men do. So I don't know, maybe it's a bit of column A, column B, maybe it's a mix of the two. Dan, what do you think? I definitely think it's all of the above as it tends to be in these complicated geopolitical situations. Um, first of all, as always, our hearts go out to the people in Ukraine who are just dealing with yet another day and another week and another month of this invasion and onslaught. And <clears throat> it seems sort of like the current plan is stalemate to some extent. Like there doesn't seem to be like Russia or Ukraine is arguing for any sort of peace, so to speak. So those on the left who are just anti-war altogether seem to be out of luck. And we're sending billions of dollars over to Ukraine. But in this case, we see why it's important. I don't even trust Putin when he's saying precision strikes because at home he's at a point where he needs to continue to justify this war. When the conscription of um, service people is increasingly unpopular and the war effort on its own is becoming starting to get a little bit unpopular in the public. But we also know that Putin and um, Russia and the military in general has been running out of their best weapons since at least four or five months ago. So instead, unless they're getting new shipments from you know China or some other ally that's like keeping it on the down low, Russia doesn't have any precision missiles to work off of. They're using bombs that have sort of like an indiscriminate kind of effect or attack or a ability to target, which makes a lot more sense considering the chaos and bloodshed you're seeing here. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like that's going to stop no matter what reason Putin tries to use to justify it, whether it's a Crimean bridge or whatever. This is just a brutal senseless war that Putin wants to see going on like till its bitter, till its bitter end, unfortunately.
Yeah, yeah, he's going to find some way to employ particularly crafted propaganda to make this entirely pointless, wasteful war benefit him personally. Not the Russian people, they'll get nothing from this. Not the Russian speaking Ukrainians who are dying in mass numbers thanks to this war. He might benefit, some of the other oligarchs might benefit. And, and as you pointed out, you know, those of us on the left who are actually against all war, this is a terrible, there's just, it's been what, eight months of just devastation. Um, others who are against war opportunistically just when it's the United States engaging in it, and they're perfectly fine with other imperial states killing tons of civilians there. I guess they're having more fun with this, I don't know. Um, but for those of us who care about the mass death of civilians, this is um, devastating. So. Uh, you know, they they did these strikes. Uh, here's here's some more fun to add to the pile. The president of uh, Belarus, uh, Alexander Lukashenko, announced uh, Monday that he and Putin have agreed to deploy a joint regional grouping of troops amid the escalation of fighting Ukraine. He said that he's worried about Ukraine attacking or invading Belarus or something. Just whatever, just whatever, just whatever, whatever you need to say. You're going along with Russia, you're gonna help invade. I guess there was an excess of your soldiers that hadn't been needlessly dying, and you wants to get in on the death. So send your soldiers across, they'll die too. It'll be amazing for humanity. The cool thing is that we as a species, as a planet, are not facing any crises not of our own making. And so everything's fine and everybody's doing great. And so we can afford to waste time and money and lives in these sorts of pointless attacks. I guess we should give Dan, I guess we should give a little bit of credit to Russia. It is nice that they didn't nuke Ukraine, which is now apparently an option on any given day. And so the fact that they only killed civilians with conventional arms is better. Damning with faint praise. Yeah, that's the whole angle you put in there, John. There's nukes involved here. So it's something I'm definitely we're all really watching with bated breath here and hopefully this doesn't Putin's doing a lot of nuclear saber rattling as he has from the beginning so far over the past 8 or 9 months or so that's proven to be just that but obviously we're all watching very closely because we don't want to escalate any further check out the damage report podcast each day wherever you get your podcasts whether pocket cast or stitcher or itunes You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's The Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show. 